Well, 2023, what can I say? I know it's cliche, but 2023 has been the best year, but it's also been the very worst. Let me explain. Out of the old, in with the new. It's my year. So how do you actually make 2024 your year? The big step we need to take to make it your year is to plan it. And what we need to plan is where we're gonna go. If you're looking to make 2024 your year, you're in the right place. I'm gonna be breaking down the steps to put you on the path for achieving those goals. The power of planning. First things first, a well thought out plan can be an absolute game changer. It helps you set goals, stay organized, and ultimately turn your dreams into actionable steps. Planning is really just a map towards your goals and the future you want. Now that doesn't mean you'll make it towards your goals just by planning, as anybody who's ever used a map to try and get someplace and has gotten lost knows, just because you know the way and you followed a map doesn't always get you where you need to be. The lesson here is that you have to keep checking in and looking at your goals and plans and making sure they are heading in the right direction. So, reflecting on 2023. Before we jump into 2024, let's take a quick look back on 2023. What worked well? What lessons did you go? Reflecting on the past year can provide some valuable insights and lessons learnt that will help you with your plans and goals in the future. I know it's cliche, but 2023 has been the best year, but it's also been the very worst. Let me explain. So the big good, we welcomed Rose, our youngest, to the family. She's a cheeky little 10 month old baby slash dinosaur. We've also put a pin in for a date that me and my partner are getting married. Next to that, I also very recently got 50 subscribers on this channel, for which I'm truly grateful, and I'm really over the moon with it. Now the bad. We nearly lost Rose already. We spent over two months in hospital. During that time, she had a lot of operations, some heart operations, and in short, she ended up on a life support machine, where we were told by the doctors that we're now part of the Sick Children Club, and also that if that doesn't work, nothing else will. This was obviously the lowest part of my life, and I couldn't wish it on anybody. The whole thing was very taxing on me, my partner, the boys, and the whole the family as a whole. Another bad, both me and my partner lost our grandmothers and it was within two weeks of each other. This is just another blow that we had to deal with 2023. So yeah, it was a rough year. How to help 2004 be better? Setting smart goals. So now let's get into some nitty gritty of setting smart goals. So smart goals are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. My smart goal for this YouTube channel is to make and stick to a six month content calendar, which hopefully I have done. Now I do have a video going over smart goals and it might help you come to terms with the basics of goal setting. I'll link it somewhere. Creating your planner. You've set your goals. Now it's time to put pen to paper or fingers to keyboards and I'll walk you through the process of creating a planner for 2024. If you prefer a physical planner or digital or a combination of both, I've got you covered. So I don't know where you sit on the whole physical versus digital argument here. I personally think I love the idea of a digital planner, planner and I love the accessibility of having it all digital and at your fingertips. But with that being said, I don't think I've found a foolproof way to make sure that I capture everything and it works exactly how I'd like it to. Now my partner on the other hand prefers physical. She's a physical calendar type of lady. We both live our lives from our calendars so it's very important that we manage to synchronize. How we do this is I maintain the digital calendar which all four of us have access to. So me, my partner and the boys. But I'll also print this off weekly so that everybody can see it physically. So it's there, it's out in the open, you can just go and look for it. What my partner does is she maintains the month to month calendar that we have, like this. And we try and synchronize both the calendars. This way, ideally, we get the best of both worlds with no extra effort on our part. I usually use my phone to add to our calendar digitally. How we do this and synchronize is that my partner will send me a message with the time, the date and what the appointment could be and then on my phone it literally allows you to click add to calendar 
I put it to the right calendar, our family appointments one, so that it shows across all of our calendars and synchronizes. That way my digital calendar is up to date as well as the physical calendars are all up to date. That way we can trust the system and know that we don't need to worry about any missing any appointments and we know where we're up to and where we need to be. Incorporating habits and routines. As you can tell, planning isn't just about setting goals. It's about building habits and routines that support your goals. It's integral that you build some positive habits in your daily life that help you take the steps towards making your goal a reality. So as I've mentioned, some habits and routines that help our lives is the one where we text each other our appointments. It's really simple. It's not hard to do. We'd have to let each other know about appointments anyway and it just ensures that we're completely synchronized with no little effort. It helps ensure that when we're planning things our routines are not thrown off. So the whole, fa for example, if we have an appointment on one day where we'd normally do something, when I print it off the whole family can see how that appointment will affect other things that we have going on so we'll know what we need to do and when we need to do it. So nothing will come as a surprise to us. And because this reaches the boys, it really helps them to stay involved and aware of what's going on. That takes a lot of pressure off me and my partner, and I believe it also helps create a more open, safe environment for them. It helps them to regulate themselves, especially the middle child who is autistic. It helps him to stay regulated and know what's going on. Another routine we have is that I ensure we have enough food prepared. I know it's cliche, but 2023, has been the best year, but it's also been the very worst. Let me explain. I'm ready to go before the week starts, that has everything in it, and then I will put these onto our calendar as a menu so the boys know what they're having for dinner. What this system allows us to do, it allows us to not think about what we're having for dinner, what we need to make, and everything. It also takes the pressure off the boys as soon as they get in from school, saying what's for dinner, what's for dinner. Everybody knows, we know what to do, jobs are good in. It stops us from needing to panic buy any quick, easy, instant meals because we have it ready to go, we have it made. So all it needs to do is finish off, finish off, prepare it and give it to them. That way we know they're eating healthy but with little effort from us because it's already made and ready to go. This keeps me and my partner as efficient as we can be, staying flexible and adaptable. While planning is critical, life is, life is unpredictable. There's some strategies to help stay flexible and adapt your plan when you need to. It's all about finding a balance between structure and spontaneity. Now, after the year that we've had, 2023, Rose has made it so we have to be 100% organized and planned with what we need to do. But Rose has also decided to force our planning to the next level, you'll see what I mean. So, Rose is fed through an NG tube of the day. She's also quite a fan of pulling it out. Now what this means when she pulls it out is we needed to take her to a hospital, which is an hour away, and get a new one put in. Otherwise she can't eat. And obviously we need to make sure that she's eating to stay healthy, to help her recover from what she's been through and all that good stuff. Now with the hospital being an hour away, that means best case scenario, the nurses sort us out in the car park, that's two hours of our time taken just like that. We need to be so organized that we need to be so organized so that we can drop everything we're doing, moment's notice, and afford, you know, up to around two hours of completely unplanned activities and be able to make it so that when we come back, we know exactly where we left off and what we still need to do. How we do this is because of our detailed calendar acts like a list, so we know where we got up to, we know what we've done, and we know what's left to do. It just means once the whole ordeal's over, we're back, we can carry on and we're not wasting any time thinking, what was I doing, Where was I need? To, what do I need to do? It's all planned, it's all ready, we just run through the motions and we're golden. So it was a challenging year last year, but that doesn't mean we can't move forward and upwards towards our goals for 2024. I do have a, I do have a video on how to get started setting goals for 2024, which I will link here. It goes into more details on the goal setting side, not necessarily the planning. Please do check it out and also if you could check any links in the description on my channel. Some are affiliates, I'm not sponsored by anything, it really does help me and my family 
and this channel move forward. I'd appreciate if you checked out our website also that I'm currently working on. This is the beginner's guide to planning 2024. If you found any value at all in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, the usual thing. I've been James. I'm excited to see your amazing plans. And until next time, thank you.